okay hello to all your students so in this video we shall discuss about a very very important and very less talked topic that is what is the relationship between cardiac output and urine formation okay so this topic we'll check out in today's video so suppose this is your general circulation okay this is your general circulation and suppose this is your heart you know what is the normal cardiac output yes you know cardiac output is equals to heart rate multiplied by stroke volume okay stroke volume means in single time whenever a heart beats how much amount of blood is pumped from the left ventricle into the arteries that is your aorta that is the stroke volume okay when once the blood uh, the heart is beating during one systole how much amount of blood is pumped into the aorta that is stroke volume and heart rate to so you people know in one minute how many times the heart beat so a normal heart rate we know that is on an average it is 72 okay so on an average 72 times our heart beat in one minute and a normal stroke volume is on an average it is 70 ml so when we calculate it we'll get some around 1.4 liter somewhere around so we'll take an average of uh, 5 liters okay we'll get 4 point something so approximately that is 5 liter okay so a normal cardiac output is 5 liters okay so in one minute 5 liters of the blood is being pumped out of our heart okay now among this 5 liter we need to check out how much amount is being pumped into our kidneys okay so here only we'll be drawing a renal artery okay suppose this is our renal artery sorry this is our renal artery okay so you know how much amount of blood this renal system is receiving it is almost nearly 20 to 25 percent okay so 20 to 25 percent of the total blood total this 5 liter blood 20 to 25 percent is been received to our kidneys okay both the kidneys together so we'll take an average of 20% okay 20% of the blood is been received to our kidneys so 20% of 5 liter it will be yes it will be around 1 liter okay and 1 liter means it is 1000 ml right now we know that blood consists of two important things that is it consists of it is made up of cell and plasma isn't it and we know it is like 40 percent of cell and 60 percent of plasma isn't it so among this thousand ml it will be around you can say 400 ml will be our cell and 600 ml will be plasma okay so this is the blood vessel and here i am drawing a glomerulus and this is your efferent arteriole and eventually the efferent arteriole will become yes the peritubular capillaries okay so no doubt so far a normal cardiac output is like 5 liters and among those 5 liters per minute our heart our sorry our kidneys are receiving yes 20 percent that is 1 liter of the blood, uh, blood and among that 400 ml will be the cells and 600 ml will be the plasma and we know cells they won't undergo filtration okay I'll be drawing a nephron over here suppose this is our nephron Bowman's capsule. This is the 
proximal convoluted tubule descending loop of hanley hairpin turn ascending loop next thicker part of ascending loop till here next will be your distal convoluted tubule okay collecting duct and from collecting duct finally a urine will be produced okay now we know the cells it won't undergo any kind of filtration it will be moving all the way towards the efferent arteriole but it is the plasma 600 ml of the plasma that will undergo yes glomerular filtration okay now among this plasma also the protein thing in the plasma it will not undergo filtration because it will be an increase in the size okay so how much amount will be undergoing filtration over here yes again here also it will be around 20% of the plasma will undergo filtration so we have got 600 ml of plasma and what will be the 20% of 60 uh, 600 yes if i will say 10% of 600 will be 60 ml okay so 20% will be 60 plus 60 that is 120 ml okay so it will be around 120 ml per minute there will be glomerular filtration okay this is a normal gfr okay gfr is glomerular filtration rate so per minute 120 ml of the plasma will be undergoing filtration okay no doubt so far so we know we have got a cardiac output of 5 liter isn't it and among this 5 liter 20% will be moving to the kidneys 20% of 5 liter is 1 liter or you can say 1000 ml and among this 1000 ml 40% or you can say 400 ml will be cells and 60% or you can say 600 ml will be plasma and among this plasma around 20% will undergo filtration so which will become 120 ml per minute will be which will be the normal glomerular filtration so it is 120 ml but it won't be exactly so for our understanding for now just consider it to be 100 ml okay it is actually 120 ml in most of the books it is given 120 ml but for now for our understanding i am taking 100 ml for easy calculation fine now this 100 ml of the glomerular filtrate which have come to the bowman's capsule it will be now proceeding towards the proximal convoluted tubule now in proximal convoluted tubule reabsorption will be taking place means the water will be moving into the peritubular capillaries so nearly it is around you can say 65% of reabsorption takes place from the proximal convoluted tubule okay so from 100 ml if 65% uh, will be removed means how much remain just yes 35 ml now this 35 ml will be proceeding towards the descending loop of hanley and in descending loop of hanley also reabsorption will be taking place and here you can say around 15% of the water will be undergoing reabsorbed okay so from 35 ml if 15 ml is removed then how much remain yes it will be just 20 ml now this 20 ml will be moving towards the ascending loop or you can see the thicker part of the ascending loop now the important thing to know over here is in the thicker part or thicker limb of the ascending loop of hanley the water reabsorption will not take place even if we will try it cannot undergo reabsorption okay so here there will be you know water locked uh cells you can say so there won't be any reabsorption of water okay i'm saying water there won't be any reabsorption of water or any kind of fluid in the thicker part of ascending loop of hanley so to the distal convoluted tubule same 20 ml of the filtrate will be presented now when it is moving in the distal convoluted tubule here also reabsorption takes place as you can see around 15% of reabsorption takes place so now we are left with just 5 ml okay and this 5 ml will be moving downwards in the proceeding tubules 
Now here also there are chances of reabsorption, but some kind of situation applied. Like the most of the reabsorption takes place under the influence of aldosterone as well as our ADH hormone. Okay, so when the level of these two things are more, large amount of reabsorption takes place. Okay, but in general, on an average, in a normal healthy person, nearly it is around you can say one ml of urine is formed per minute. Okay, so you can say nearly two to three or sometimes four ml of the fluid will be reabsorbed from this tubule, and just one ml of urine will be formed in one minute. Okay, so per minute, how much amount of urine is being produced in your body in both the kidneys? Yes, it will be around one ml per minute. Okay, I am talking about both the kidneys. Both the kidneys have got nearly two to two point two millions of nephron. Here I am showing just one nephron, but this thing is happening in in total in general with all the nephrons together this amount of calculation will be taking place okay so in both the kidneys together in one minute one ml of urine is being produced okay so when in one minute one ml of urine is produced means in one day how much amount of urine will be produced yes just calculate in one minute it is producing 1 ml of urine. So, how much in one day? So, you know, in one hour we have got, yes, 60 minutes. And in one day we have got 24 hours. So, 24 into 60, it will be 1440 ml. Or you can say approximately 1.5 liter of urine is produced per day. Okay. This is a average value in general but what is the normal urine output a range should be there okay so range is in between you can say in between 500 ml to 3500 ml so when the urine output per day is between this range 500 to 3500 it is said to be a normal urine output you can say per day but if the level goes below 500 ml means if any person is passing urine less than 500 ml then this condition is known as oligo urea okay and if any person is passing urine more than 3500 then such a condition is known as polyuria okay now why we are maintaining this range you know because what I means you know if suppose if any person is you know producing urine more than 3500 ml means what happens we have got some some level a storage level in our bladder okay you know in bladder urine will be stored and from bladder only we are like passing urine whenever we feel okay we need to pass the urine means we'll pass isn't it but suppose if the urine formation is more more than 3500 ml then what happens you know and normally what happens we'll be sleeping for nearly seven to eight hours and before sleeping we'll go to washroom we'll pass urine and we'll sleep but if urine formation is more than 3500 means in between sleep only two to three times or sometimes four times we need to wake up and we need to you know go to washroom and pass urine and it will spoil the quality of life okay so for this reason the normal range maximum range should be 3500 ml and not beyond that okay apart from this the lower limit should be 500 ml not less than that the reason why we are we need to maintain this 500 ml means you know whatever you know metabolic waste will be there okay whatever metabolic waste will be there it will be dissolved it will be diluted in the water and then will urinate isn't it uh, this urea and creatinine will be not removing out of our body in the powder form isn't it it will be dissolved in a fluid and we are removing out via the urine so normally what happens you know 
if we are producing metabolic waste nearly 1200 um uh, uh, moles per liter okay suppose uh, not per liter moles if suppose normally if we are producing 1200 moles of metabolic waste then it can be dissolved or diluted in 1000 ml of fluid normally normally in general in one day a person can produce 600 moles of metabolic waste and to dilute 600 moles of metabolic waste we require nearly 500 ml of fluid okay so therefore we need to remove this metabolic waste which is normally produced 600 uh, moles means when we are having a normal diet and a normal physical condition we are producing 600 moles of metabolic waste and to dissolve it we require 500 ml of fluid so for this reason we have kept a no uh, lower limit of 500 ml okay so therefore the normal range of urine, urine output should be in between 500 ml to 3500 ml okay so this is all about our today's video regarding the you know connection between cardiac output and the urine uh, uh, secretion okay i hope you people found this video helpful thank you for watching